Hey guys, this is Eminem Weekly. Hey, okay, we'll get to the best, we'll get the best list in a little bit, but let's start with the worst list because honestly, that's the way everyone wants it to be. And honestly, I got no, not a lot to say about this, so I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. All in all, 2017 was a pretty great week in terms of movies. Over here in terms of movies, but the bad ones that came really stood out, and, and yeah, the ones I'm gonna reveal to you guys um, on my on my December mentions and on my worst list, I'm pretty sure none of you will object to those. That being said, let's get started with those, shall we? Suburbicon, The Mummy, Transformers: The Last Night, and The Dark Tower. And there you go. They they did just they did still um, tick me off this year, but they didn't do enough to get onto the list proper. Speaking of which, you know I'm a guy who can actually tolerate a good chick flick, and there are and there are some decent ones um that have that have good storylines, good humor, and and some and these these believable relationship and such. However, when you basically bring on, uh, however, when it comes to a newcomer doing it, there can be some misgivings, and and that's honestly what Home Again does. Now, the director Hallie Sh Shannon Myers, she could have been done a lot better, but given that she's the dog Nancy Myers, she should have done a lot better. And in the dialogue, my gosh, all of this sounds like it could have been first draft material. Material, not to mention the fact that the three guys she takes in, this has to be homeless people. They barely even look like it. Seriously. Honestly, do yourself a favor, skip this. There are bad chick flicks to watch, better things to do. You know, it's disappointing to put this on this list, considering that A, I like Guy Ritchie, B, I think Tron Herman's a great actor, and B, I really like The Legend of King Arthur. Heck, you're looking at a guy who loves Monty Python and the Holy Grail for Pete's sake, and, and who likes other mo and he likes other stuff of Arthurian legend. That being said, Guy Ritchie may be a great director in terms of his uh, unique vision and especially his sense of sense of his fast-paced direction, but for this, it doesn't work. The reason why it worked so well when he made Sherlock Holmes and its sequels because is because Holmes's attitude and and his stories were um, uh, married well against against his direction. But here, look, I just know what to tell you. Now I just. Now I know it barely hold together against uh, um, any elements of the actual King Arthur legend. Most of the characters aren't even present, and although Charlie Herman and Ju Jude Law do their best to save the film, it's not enough, guys. And not enough, guys. I'm serious. Okay, another guy who's seen King Kong a few times, many times. I have seen him in. And if, and if you're in incarnations, especially in the Lego Batman movie, but here's what you do when, but here's what you do when you make a movie like this. You make sure you feature comic as much as you can, and you do not waste any of the talent you have available to you. And that, and that's what, and that's what they do with, I don't know, Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, and especially John freaking Goodman. Seriously, if, if John Goodman's one of my favorite actors, if, if you, if you underutilize him in your films, you can expect me to, um, to come after him. Come after that, Samuel L. Jackson at least gets uh, gets some kind of development for this for uh, for this character. But outside of that, barely any characters feel one dimension feel even even two dimensional at best. And, and to say nothing of the fact that the film doesn't even try to um uh, try to be good uh, isn't try to be good, and, and especially doesn't help when you bring out first time first time director to do it. It should have done some. Uh, and it should have something with someone with, with more talent because given that we basically have a screenplay written by Dan Gilroy, the same guy who made Nightcrawler, I'm done. Really. I'm done. Now look, I... Look, Dean definitely might be might be good as a producer, especially um, considering he works so much for uh, Roland Emmerich on his films, especially Independence Day. But here's the thing, reason Dean Devlin should basically still go producing because his directorial debut here just didn't work at all. One of the reasons that Roland Emmerich's films work so well is because, despite how overblown and action-packed it was, 
he actually had charisma to his films and decent actors who got actually were allowed to have some fun with their roles and try to go over the top. Here, although although the actors um, seem like they try to do that, the direction is so is so tight and so sedate that not only uh, not only the actors not allowed to have fun, but but he can't even pull off the the serious um, roles convincingly. And especially considering that you have Gerard Butler playing this, the smartest guy in the world, and Jim Sturgis playing his big guy brother. I'm sorry. I can't back that up. Ed Harris, uh, even Ed Harris seems wasted, as is Andy Garcia. That's what the biggest kind of this movie could commit. And considering that not much of the science here doesn't make any sense, I, you know, I'm just going to stop there. I'm just going to stop there. Book movie adaptations can be hard to pull off in this day and age. I can't admit, I can't admit that. Especially when you have to not only get the source material right, but most specifically when you have to make it connect for, for the audience you're trying to relate to. That being said, it, even though um, Joe Nesbo's novels have been, have been um, um, somewhat good, uh, somewhat good um, that, the way they're being adapted to the screen here, it really fails horribly. Um, and, and it doesn't seem like that can say you have, you have, you have Tom... Tomas Alfredson, the director of Tinker Tail Soldier Spy, not to mention the fact that you basically have Michael Fassbender, Charlotte Gainsbourg, and Rebecca Ferguson in the cast, not to mention Val Kilmer, but this film just falls apart. The mystery is uninteresting. The cinematography uh, photography doesn't help at all. Help at all. The twist at the end is so uh, is so horrible. Not to mention the fact that this film tries to be subtle with its twist and just doesn't work. Oh no! Oh no! I'd rather actually go build an actual snowman to watch this happen. Okay. I never liked this series at all. I absolutely loved the first one, which I didn't see. And I'm thankful that when that came out, I was able to see the actually better movie than that, which was Kingsman and the Secret Service. But... But after... But after I mean, but for this one... That's all. Now, now I'm gonna admit to you guys. I, I, I too am all for movies where the information to information age is so overloaded that we need a movie made about this. But given, but given that the book that this movie is based off of by Dave Eggers wasn't that really, really that good to begin with, and didn't really receive a lot of attention, I find hard to believe that they actually made a movie about this. Yes, that said, um. Given that I had Emma Watson, Tom Hanks, and even John Boyega, fresh off his success from Star Wars The Force Awakens, it could have been good. But this film fails. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, I, I, mean, I get making a movie about the information age and basically commenting on it. But if you're going to do something, um, that, do something that obviously pulls from George Orwell's novels, especially those of other dystopian novels, you need to ensure that, that your message connects with the audience and doesn't feel overloaded or actually shows both the good and the good and the bad sides of technology being everywhere. But this one doesn't even go that. Honestly, because, honestly, I don't know what's it's because they thought people would get scared by it, but there's no real downside to any of this technology going public. Not, just, not to mention the fact that Emma Watson is completely wasted. Her performance is, is, is so bad that even her character is unlikable. Tom Hanks uh, does bring his charisma, but even he can't save this film. In fact, they, were, they completely wasted John Boyega and Karen Gillan. That just sets my teeth on edge. And Honestly, if I want to see um, a movie about information age, I'll just go read George Orwell if I want to. Talking about Resident Evil, the final chapter, is making me want to punch my laptop in the face. You know, there's been a reason why music video game movies have not been successful. And some of them have been okay, like Warcraft, that was good. I liked Dungeon Siege by Uwe Boll, and that's coming from a guy who actually thinks there is some credit to Uwe Boll's movies when he was making them, that is. But, but, here, here, come, but here comes Paul W. w. S. Anderson, and I think he's a much worse director than Uwe Boll ever was. At least Uwe Boll had said, I could, at least some, could at least keep his scenes consistent, if only for a few times. Paul W. S. Anderson... That guy's probably the worst guy ever to step behind the, behind the camera at all. 
Oh, if you watch this movie, you ba and you basically see um, what's going on. Not only is the camera works in the most shakiest and most unfocused I've ever seen, uh, seen. It, it is, it's so shaky. It's basically like the camera, the cinematographer is having a seizure the whole movie, and no one even treated him for it. And then we on the fact that the the part that was in the same can't seem to say say no or basically ask for a second take on anything. Seriously, all this seems like first take stuff. Not only does his wife Mina Yogovich phone, phone in with some of some of the worst acting I think I've ever seen from her. Not only does it completely waste Ruby Rose, who's a better, much better actress than this film can afford. I'm just gonna stop there. There's just there's no way. There's, there's no way this movie um can ever be good at all. The only good thing I'm gonna say about this movie is the fact that they're rebooting it and James Wan is attached as a as a producer. And you know what? That's about the most smart thing they've could possibly done for this franchise because this it can rot in hell. <laughs>there's one thing that sets this movie apart from the others, and that this is on Netflix, not on in theaters. However, and, and considering the fact that there are at least two good names attached to this, or three, four actually, you got uh, Will Smith, you got George Ten, you got screenwriter Max Landis, and director David Ayer, who didn't do a, a bad job on Suicide Squad, it could be something good, right? And it, even the premise could be it could be good if it was turned into something, turned into something memorable. In other words, that's the reason this is number two, guys. And the best way I can sum it up is the fact not only does it completely waste what uh, all the, all this talent, it actually conjures up some of the worst ever dialogue, not from Max Landis himself, but but in the in the entire 2017 as a whole. Seriously, Will Smith's character basically said, tries to get political with the line "fairy fairy lives don't matter today," or, or, or even when or even Joel Edgerton's Jacoby, the work his partner. He basically says, I want to be a cop since I was a little kid. I have nothing else. And not to mention the fact that his badge means more to him than the air he breathes. Oh, great. oh yeah, oh yeah, sure, you can save um You can save America. When you're dead. Because seriously, that's what you're implying. Like, and that's not good and that's not getting to the, the worst line this of twenty seventeen ever. It's basically when um one of the, basically, um, when Numi Rompas' Rampa, character says, I'm a warrior, a priestess, a lover, I am whatever my lord needs me to be. Well, yeah, anyway... And the fact that Max Landis wrote this. And the fact that Will Smith starred in this. Excuse me while I go into another room and off screen punch a wall. Look, I know that this might seem like a a good excuse for a cash grab, or a good Sony movie. It's got emojis, right? Yeah, those things on cell phones. We love them. We all love them. Heck, people, people, great, people created those, those. Actually, are much better on our phones than the phones themselves. But when, but when you add the fact that Sony Animation, which just made some good films, heck, I'd say that um, Clouds of Chance Meatballs, it, um, and Total Transylvania are two of the best film anime films to date. But when I saw this film, I saw that it had not only T.J. Miller, not only Anna, Anna Ferris, Maya Rudolph, James Corden, who I never really liked, and has, in the most wasted cameos of all, Sir Patrick Stewart and Sophia Vergara. And we end the fact that the animation is anything but expressive. I mean, adding how there's more pandering in this film than Spider-Man 2 or... I don't know. Any movie I can name right now. 
And then we end up, and then we, and then, and then the fact that Stephen Wright, a comedian that I actually love, is wasted in this film, even though I get why he voices his character. You know what? Back when I was, you know, back when I was uh, talking about Bright, I basically said I wanted to punch a wall. I'm gonna do worse than that. I'm gonna go into that room, set on fire, with my phone in it. That's how much this film is taking me off. And if someone would if, if if someone would give me a DVD of this film, I would basically break it over their skull and basically say, "Go back to your phone, you dumb butt." And, and 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 trust me, if it wasn't for the fact that the star came out before Christmas, and I thought, um, and so he made, and and I saw that film, and I thought that was actually pretty good. This could have been Sony's uh, worst year. I'm glad they got the star out and that saved them, but this movie is still as rotten that as it ever was. And there is gonna be a sequel. I am basically gonna take my, I'm gonna basically take my phone, smash it. I'm gonna go to the nearest Apple store and torture to the ground. There you have it, folks. My worst film of this year. All you actors, I apologize. You guys can do so much better. And Sony, get your crap together in 2018 or there will be hell to pay. So till then, guys, I'm gonna go cool off. I'm Ross, this is Eminem Weekly. So long.